Hello everyone. Before I wrap up Proverbs 6, 16, the various abominations of the Lord, because I was going to do Proverbs 18, 21 to wrap them up. I want to talk about something that is, is akin to the abominations of the Lord. It actually ties into them. Proverbs 17, 15. He who justifies the wicked and he who condemns the righteous are both alike an abomination to the Lord. So again, the last few days I've been talking about the abominations of the Lord. But this one, it says it's, it's akin, it's alike an abomination of the Lord. This is a very subtle trick. He who justifies the wicked and he who condemns the righteous are both alike an abomination to the Lord. What it's saying, it's that legal jargon that passive aggressiveness to make the righteous seem wicked and make the wicked seem good. Now, I speak on how we can at times make things that are unrighteous seem good on verse of day 42. I talk about the, the hip hop street culture, but there is also the legal culture, the political parties, things that they do in that nature. Things such as justifying the murder of babies that are in the womb. Instead of calling it pro-death, for death, they will call it pro-choice. So instead of you having pro-life and pro-death, you have pro-life and pro-choice. But those that are pro-life also believe in choice. We believe that we should choose what we spend our money on, as far as killing babies, we believe that the baby should be able to choose what they do, should they live or die. We believe that the baby are individual life, that they have their own DNA, and they should be given and afforded all the rights of everyone else, and they cannot make any decisions. But with the jargon, now you have pro-choice, and pro-life and they may a lot of people on the political party they may not necessarily want to to side with abortion but the thing is maybe there is something in that party that they do want to side with such as the environment so they take everything people can be bought Ideolo ideologies can be bought hey but hey join our calls and we'll support your cause that's what ends up happening a lot of times. People pull together. And mind you, I'm saying this as a person that's not in any political party. But I see people pull all the way. Like, hey, I don't believe in killing babies. They're like, I don't either. I'm like, hey, but I think we should have guns. Well, I don't really think we should. everybody should have a gun and we should wild, wild west. But you don't believe in killing babies? Yeah, let's all have guns. We pull to these parties due to our our desires and things and and it's not good um another thing is 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 racism you know um at times people pull that way with the with the george floyd incident everyone saw it on tv we saw three different camera angles yet people were trying to justify it by the cops training, not thinking that the cop is capable of making rational thought right there. Like, hey, I've been on his neck for nine minutes. So now we have illegal cases and lawyers are trying to defend this man's actions. It, I know I'm touching on some, some tough subjects, but the thing about it is we may go through all these legal cases and things. They may call lies miscommunications. There's a lot of passive aggressiveness in a lot of legal terms. They have to be passive aggressive to get their point across. And there's a lot of loopholes that are played in courtrooms and things. But God, he cuts through all the red tape. He knows, you, he knows whether he was guilty or not. He'll call murder, murder. He'll call... <laughs> <laughs> He'll call a lie a lie. 
He'll call someone who is who is, has a bad heart a bad heart. It's not a miscommunication. It's not a pro-choice. It's not police training that calls someone to die. God calls it as it is. And that's why he who justifies the wicked and he who condemns the righteous are both alike an abomination to the Lord. You're twisting the words. Remember Satan, as he was tempting Jesus, says, Does not the word say? <laughs> He's quoting scripture. He likes to twist and mold and, and make things work. And he usually always builds it upon the desires of groups of people to get this accomplished. But let me read some scriptures about it. Proverbs 24, 24. These are also our sayings of the wise. Partiality in judging is not good. Whoever says to the wicked, you are in the right, will be cursed by peoples, abhorred by nations. But those who rebuke the wicked will have the light, and a good blessing will come to them. And what this is talking about, the, a lot of times, the mass of the people, they know if, it's, if, if it wasn't right. They know if a judgment call was not right. So when people that have, have done a heinous murder of someone and they get in the courtroom because of the legal jargon frees them, the people are going to lose their mind. They're going to go crazy. Not that we support them going crazy, but that's what happens. Because we inherently all have the Lord in us. We know what his decree and moral law is. So when we see it, be played in the system unfairly, people tend to lose their mind. Exodus 23, 7. Keep far from a false charge and do not kill the innocent and righteous for I will not acquit the wicked. Do not kill the innocent and righteous. God's like, boom, right there. I'm not, I'm not playing through the red tape. I am the final judge is what the Lord is saying. Isaiah 5, 22 to 23. And this is an interesting one. Woe to those who are heroes at drinking wine and valiant men mixing and mixing strong drink, who acquit the guilty for a bribe and deprive the innocent of his right. What I think about this is almost good old boy systems. People that like to party together and they got drinking buddies. Drink, 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 drink. And they got people that are like, Man, that boy can drink. He, he's a king. He could take like 20, I don't know, 20 beers. And they're all buddies. But And because they're buddies, they will quit the guilty for a bribe and deprive the innocent of his right. Because they're boys. Our club, our frat is bigger than anything. I got your back, you got my back. Job 34, 17. Shall one who hates justice govern? Will you condemn who is righteous and mighty? Yeah, we need we need righteous judges. Psalm 94. They band together against the life of the righteous and condemn the innocent to death. That is what I was talking about. People pulling together to get their agendas across. They band together against the life of the righteous and condemn the innocent to death. Let's band together. Rights. But not the woman in the wounds. Not the, the the baby men in the womb. But the women outside. We have the rights to make. Say who dies and who lives. Our choice. Proverbs 17, 26. To impose a fine on a righteous man is not good. Nor to strike the noble for the uprightness. Yeah. Enough said. Proverbs 18, 5. It is not good to be partial to the wicked and to deprive the righteous of justice. Yeah, what are we doing when we're trying to make it easier for those that are wicked? But those that are, are sad, those that have lost their loved ones, they can't get justice. They seek justice. They have to mourn their whole life because someone was innocently killed. And we are partial to the wicked. We protect the wicked. It's not good. 
So again, these are two more things that are alike unto abomination of the Lord. They tie into things such as false witness because they skew what is the truth. They change the words. They're passive aggressive. Tomorrow, tomorrow, if it's the Lord's will, I will wrap up all the abominations of the Lord using Proverbs 18, 21. Dear Heavenly Father, these are hard words I'm sharing, but you come at it straight. And I want to come at it straight, Father. You know the hearts of men. You know evil actions. Let's cut through the red tape. Let's be honest, Father. Thank you. And Lord, may many understand that I'm trying to talk to them as straight as possible. May many be saved. May many hearts be changed. In Yeshua's name, amen. Goodbye.